I have, I have. <laughs> Yes, I can't hear you. Can you repeat again? I have a fever. Oh, oh that's too bad. Okay, I hope you um, get well soon. And I'm really glad that you still joined our class today. That's awesome. Thank you so much, teacher. Okay, and if you need to go off camera and you know rest for a little, that's Thanks also so okay. Much. That's also okay. You don't always have to be on camera, but the rest of the students, I would love to see you. Oh, thank you so much. Can you please turn your cameras on? All those except Nevan. Okay, I can see Dimeth. I can see Orudit. I can see Rajit or Ragit. Is your name Ragit or Rajit? Ragit. Oh, okay. Nice to meet you, Ragit. I think today is the first class where I saw you. You weren't in the introductory class, right? Yeah, I went. Okay, no worries at all. Hello, Tizen. I can see you fixing your camera. How are you doing? Good, teacher. Okay, Dimet, how are you? Fine, teacher. Okay, so I guess we can wait for just one, 1. 1.5 more minutes to see if anyone else joins us. Then we will start our class, okay? Okay, teacher. Ah, okay. Okay, so Okay, so let me share my screen. Okay, I'm so excited to welcome you guys to our first, very first ever biology course, or biology class. So um, I like to start the class. I would love to start the class from now on by saying you are star stuff. Okay, that's going to be the slogan of our biology course. Do you guys, um, can you guys uh, guess what I meant by you are star stuff? Um, yes. Yes, can anyone share? I would love to listen. I can guess it. I already know what it is. I, I think because I already know what it is. Uh, okay, teacher, okay, okay, go on. Hey. Uh, I think because some people call that um, uh, the our son is our mother that's what we are stuff stuff and and I think because we are in different galaxies because because you are made of a star we are Good. Okay, Hello. okay, okay. I can see that a lot of people are trying to speak at once. We are going to go one by one. Okay, I can see Tizen raised hand. Yes, Tizen, can you go first? Uh, I quiet didn't hear you. What to tell did? Yes. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, now can. Okay. Yes, Tizen, can you tell me what you um, understand by the slogan that we made up for our biology course? You are star stuff. Yes, Tizen, go on. Then Arudit can share. Because you are made out of stardust. Ah, that's an awesome answer. Okay, Arudit, can you go next? And anyone else wants to share? Um, because we are made 
count us the same things that is noise and sound. We contain plus in our body too. Uh, uh, teacher, I can. Yes. Okay. Um, I can see two more people wants to go. Yes. Yes. Go on. Tell me what you think. I think because uh, we were made out of atoms called as stardust. Stardust mm. atoms. Yes. And who else wants to go next? Yes, continue. Okay, you guys are all correct. Yes, we human beings and not just us human beings, all the living creatures on planet Earth, it is said that all of us are made of atoms and all these atoms came from far away distant stars. And when those stars exploded, all these atoms were hurled into the universe, just thrown into the universe. And basically like we throw seeds in a field or in a farmland and those atoms are what made us and our planet and all the living things that we see today. So that's why it is said that all of us are star stuff. We are literally made out of stars. We are made out of the same atoms and same molecules that made up ancient stars. Like we are made out of hydrogen, and oxygen and all these molecules and stars are made of the same things. So I thought that was a really nice thing to know for our biology class. Because you see biology is the study of the history of life. And if we don't know what we are made of, how are we going to, you know, study biology? So that's why I wanted to tell you guys that. Okay. So for those of you who were absent in our introductory class, I would love to show you this slide again. Um, this just gives you an idea of what our biology class today would look like. So first we are going to open with a little bit of an icebreaker. Then we are going to dance to a song a little bit and we are gonna dance because dancing I think is the best way to celebrate being alive right we should celebrate being alive because life is so rare and then we are gonna go on 30 minutes lecture sessions and after every 30 minutes I'm gonna give you guys a little bit of a brain break so you will get five minutes of brain break and that's how we're going to go on. And so if you want, you can actually put on um, an alarm right now. So you know that if every 30 minutes, um, after every 30 minutes, we're going to get a five minutes break. So I am going to start putting out an alarm. You guys can do it too if you want. So right now it's like 7.50 p.m. in my time in Dhaka. Um, so I'm going to give a 30 minutes alarm. And after 30 minutes, you can take a little bit of a brain break. You can go stretch a little bit. You can go talk to mom or dad. You can pet your cat or dog or whatever pet you have. And then we can resume our lesson. Okay. And we are going to also do a little bit of a group work today. And after we end our lectures, there's going to be a and a time where you can ask any questions you like. And then we are going to fill out an exit ticket. And that's it. Okay. So... Let's move on to the icebreaker. Okay, so for this is a little fun game. So I've written out how you can play this game. First of all, I'm going to need all of you to be on your webcam. Uh, I mean, I need all of you to turn your cameras on. Um, Nevan, it's okay if you turn off your camera. You are sick, so that's all right. Okay. Now, 
Here's how we are going to play this game. So you are going to close one eye and you're going to peek out from the other eye. And then you are going to share one word, any word, any word that comes to your mind that describes your one-eyed monster. So you have basically become a one-eyed monster. And now think of what your one-eyed monster looks like. Okay? Any word, any word that describes your monster. And share that with us by unmuting yourself. And then when you're done sharing, we can quickly tag someone else and they can share and that's how we can move on. Okay? Did we all understand? Yes. Okay, so let's play. So I'm gonna go first, then I'm gonna tag Nevan, okay? So first, so my one-eyed monster is blue. Now, Nevan, you go. You can share any word that comes to your mind that describes your one-eyed monster. Okay, I can see Nevan had to leave. No worries. Orodith, you can go next. Orodith, you can go next. Then we Please. can... Yes. Please. Share any word, any one word that describes your one-eyed monster. You are a one-eyed monster now, okay? So close one eye and then share one word. Friendly. Yes, friendly. Okay, that works, I guess. Can you text someone else then? Or did you have to text someone else? Yeah. Okay. Thyssen, you can go next. Thyssen, you're one-eyed monster. Okay, I think Thyssen re-entered our room. Uh, Thyssen, we're playing a little game. Um, can you please look at the slide and share one word? Yes, teacher. Yes, can you, uh, we are playing a little game. Can you please uh, share one word? Like you have to pretend that you are an one-eyed monster right now, okay? You only have one eye now. Tell us any one word that comes to your mind that describes your monster. It can be any word. Okay, I'm waiting for Tisen. Neutron? Yeah. Yes. Neutron. Neutron. Okay. <laughs> That's an interesting word. Okay. Can you text someone else then? Someone else. Okay. I think uh, Dimet can share next. Dimet, can, can you go next? Yeah. Yeah, Aurodith, uh, Aurodith has shared. Dimit, can you go next? Monkey. 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 Okay, your monster looks like a monkey. Huh? Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Next, Ragit, can you share one word that describes your monster? It has 150 arms and 100 legs. 
Oh, wow. That's not a one word. I guess that's an entire sentence, <laughs> but that's okay. Thank you. Next, um, next, who else has missed out? Um, did all of us share? Anyone else left out? Did Ravi do? Yes. Okay, I guess Nevan had to leave, but other than that, all of us have shared. Okay, so now that our game is done, let's do a little bit of exercise so that the blood flows to our bodies and we are active and we are paying attention to our lesson today, okay? So I'm gonna play a video and you guys are gonna dance to it, okay? So it's a very quick and short dance and I hope it makes you guys feel well and energetic. So let me play the video right now. And you guys all have to dance, okay? Just follow the moves that the video does. One has to dance. I want to see all my students dancing, except um, I guess Nevan, you can uh, take a little bit of rest. But everyone else, I would love to see you dancing, okay? This is gonna help us be more energetic in our class today. Now that our dancing is done, we're gonna move on to our class. Did you guys have fun? Was that a nice song? What do you guys think? What does the, was that a nice song? Did you like it? Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Yes. Did you have fun dancing? Yes, ma'am. Yes, teacher. Yes. Okay, yes. I, I can see Dimit sharing, but what about everyone else? Ragit, Thisen, Arudit, did you guys like the song I too? I had also yes. a song. Yes. Yes, okay. So now let's move on to our lesson. So first, for all of you, let's recap a little bit of what we learned in the introductory lesson. So in the introductory lesson, we learned a little bit about what biology actually means. So I'm going to revise that a little bit for you guys again. Biology is basically the study of all the living things on planet Earth. Okay, so if we studied, for example, alien life on Mars, that would be called astrobiology or any other planets other than Earth. The study of living things in those planets or on those planets, if there are living things, would be called astrobiology. But since so far we have only found living things or life on planet Earth, we are just going to study biology and it's just going to be called biology. Okay. So now the word biology is actually derived or sourced from two different words. And these two different words are from an ancient language the Greek language. Now, in the Greek language, the word bios means basically life. And the word logos means to study or study. So bios and logos combined form the English word biology that we use today. And biology basically just means the study of all the living things. Now, the people who study biology professionally, like that's their job, they are called biologists, right? And they have all sorts of different fun things to do. Do any of you guys want to become biologists when you grow up? Uh, yes. Yes. Who said? Who said they want to be a biologist? I'm a I'm Ragit. Oh, Ragit wants to be a biologist. And who else? I want to be a biologist. 
Oh wow! Now, and everyone wants to be an astrobiologist. That's awesome. No, I don't want to be an astrobiologist. I just want to be a regular biologist. Since wow. I love yeah, like, since I love the animals. Um. Well, what if there are animals on other planets, right? You'd love to study them too, right? No. No. Okay. Just art animals then. Okay, we can do that. <laughs> That's you also fun. Just, you want to be an astrobiologist. Ah, okay. So awesome. We have so many biologists and astrobiologists with us today. That's awesome. Now, so what do biologists, all these people do, right? So all these professional people basically just study the structure, like how all these living things, all these plants or all these animals are, you know, how their bodies work, how their bodies are structured, how they grow from a little baby to a big animal or a big plant, or how the life, on, how, or, or what the story of the origination of life is on planet Earth, how life evolves, or how, yes, yes. And we are also going to learn about how all the things, uh, you know, distribute themselves and on what basis they do that. So all of these things. So that's basically what biologists study. So if you want to become a biologist, you are also going to learn all of these things. Now, in today's class, we are going to basically learn cell structure. So you can see that in the slide, I have written out the learning objective. So this is our objective for the day. We are gonna be able to understand and define what cell structure means and what all the things that a cell structure contains, okay? So if you want to take note, you can start from now. Here's a little bit of a glimpse that um, uh, you can look at to get an idea about all the things that we're gonna learn in today's class. Now, I'm gonna give you two to five seconds to just look at this. No need to be worried at all. Some of these words might seem very, very foreign, but we're gonna learn about this, okay? Just take a look. Just take a look at all these words on the slide. Okay, did everyone take a look? Yes, teacher, I took a look. Okay, Arudit, can you first tell me um, what word um, is, you know, standing out to you the most from uh, all these difficult words? What word? Nucleus. Nucleus. Okay, does that sound familiar? Yes, it sounds very familiar to me. Mm, where did you, um, you know, first read about this word? Was it in chemistry? In astronomy. Oh. Wait, I can say what's a nucleus. I know the definition of what's a nucleus. The nucleus is what's in the center of a blood cell. Not blood cell, a cell. That's what's in the center, the nucleus. The nucleus, the nucleus is also. The nucleus is the cell's control center. It yes. contains all the instructions needed to operate the cell, it's known as. Code in DNA molecules. Wow, awesome. I am super impressed. Yes, yes, and yes. So we have nucleus in chemistry. We have nucleus in biology. We also study nucleus in, you know, physics. So what are all these nucleuses about? I don't know, but I can tell you that in biology, Nucleus is a very, very, very important thing. We're going to learn about it today. So anyone else wants to share any other words? Yes, teacher. I want to say something more. Yes, I, yes. Can, I can only read the first two. I cannot see the others. The screen is not clear. 
Ah, okay. You can see the screen. Okay. Yes. Let me um let me see what's up with that. Can you see the rest of the slide now? Oh yeah. Okay, everyone can see it. But this there's a small one I don't understand. I know all the other parts except for the third one. The chromosomes. Okay. Yes, no worries at all. We are gonna slowly learn about them. Anyone else wants to share uh, what seems you know interesting excuse about this? Me, I'm an experience making it true. I am I have a book which tells about the structure and it tells it is a germinate fluid. Mean fluid made mostly of more difference. In the space between the cells organisms. Oh, it is the plus. Wow. Okay. So I think you guys know, already know a lot about it. I'm super yes. actually surprised. Okay. So let's see um, what else new things we can learn today. So let's move on. Now. Let's first try to understand what is a cell, right? So if I give you guys a simple um, analogy, it would be like, so look at the house that you live in, right? Just look at it. Just take a look around yourself. So what are these, uh, you know, walls made of? What are the walls in your house? Or what are the rooms? Um, bricks. Bricks, right? bricks and uh, concrete all that sort of stuff but bricks are the main thing that makes up a house so all the houses all the buildings all the apartments are made out of these tiny you know bricks now so think of cells as bricks okay like in a building in your building for example you have so many so many bricks like in a small plant or in a giant elephant, all these living things are made out of these cells. So cells are what makes up all the living creatures. It can be a very, very tiny moss plant or it can be a very giant dinosaur, right? Every little thing in between Every living thing is made up of cells. Now, so these tiny building blocks, so cells are the building blocks of life. Just like the way that your buildings are made out of bricks, all the living things or all of life on earth are, be, are built out of, you know, cells. We don't know about aliens. I don't know what they might be built of. But we can, um, you know, have a pretty good guess if life on Earth is made out of cells. Maybe they are made out of cells too. We don't know. Maybe the astrologists among us will study that when they grow up. Okay. <laughs> so all the living things have cells, right? And these tiny building blocks of cells work together to create simple simplest of living things it can be bacteria it can be virus or it can be very complicated things like people and animals and gigantic animals so now what do these cells do for example our buildings or houses are made of bricks and these bricks basically give a structure to the entire house, right? The same way cells basically just provide solid structure for the body. Yes, I can see two people have raised hands. Nevan, do you have a question? Yes, teacher. Yes, go on. The question I have is, mm -hmm. other than the nutrients, does the cell help us in something else? Can you repeat again? 
other than the nutrients, will the cell help us in something else? Help us in something else? What do you mean yeah. by that? Like, it gives nutrients, to, like we can fix our bones, like, yeah, it can cure the blood and fix the blood cells. Can it yes. do something else other than that? Yes, they can. Yes, they can. They can absolutely do a lot of things. So I'm going to go into that a little bit. But actually, you reminded me of something very important and kind of a fun fact. That fun okay. fact is, for example, cells can be very simple. And okay. cells can also be very, very complicated. So we okay. human beings or, for example, your cat or your dog or an elephant or a tiger, all these animals or, for example, a giant mango tree, so all these um, giant or a little bit of complicated living things are made out of complicated cells. And these cells have very specific functions. Each cell is like a soldier in an army, right? And yeah. all these soldiers have very specific things to do. For example, in an army, you guys have, you know, different units. For example, yeah. there's a tank unit and uh, I don't know, tank battalion or whatever. I'm, I don't really know all that. But so, yeah, so there is a bomb squad. There is a tank squad. There is a, uh, I don't know, missile squad. And so all these squadrons of soldiers in an army have, you know, different functions or different work to do. The same yeah. way in our bodies, cells have different, 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 different works to do. Okay. And these cells can also be very little, 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 little microbes or bacteria or virus. And these bacteria or viruses or microbes or micro lives, living things can also have different work to do that ultimately helps us. Okay. So now. I think I saw another hand. Uh, is that Arodit? Yes, Arodit. Do you have any question? Yes, okay. yes, yes, go on. What is uh, immune system cell? Immune system cell. Yes. So these are cells that make up our immune system. So if I give you an analogy, Mm, every country has, almost every country on earth, um, I think there are some countries that do not. Yes, so basically every country has a border guard, right? A border guard patrol, a border army. A army an army, basically a team of soldiers that just protects the borders of a country, right? Yeah. I think you guys have border um, uh, border guards too in Sri Lanka, right? Do you guys have that? No. You don't? Okay, so uh, maybe that's mm -hmm. because... Excuse me, teacher. Yeah, Does so... It activate when some general bacteria goes into our body and there's something called the microphone and it's the very first one. Um, I think so, yeah, that could be. But I think uh, the distinguishing that I would love to establish is that a border patrol or, you know, basically just the soldiers that defend the country from outsider invasion. They, they can be called the immune system of that country, right? They protect that country so that from outside, others do not attack that country. Okay. The same way immune systems of every animals and even plants have cells that basically work like little soldiers, or border patrol cops, and they protect the cells or protect the body or a particular body part from you know outside invasion of viruses or bacteria or anything harmful okay yes 
Now, so what do these cells do? As I said, different different types of cells have different types of you know work to do. But basically, all cells do some common things. And what are those common things? Those common things are all the cells provide structure for the body. You know, they give the body a shape. So, for example, when you were a baby, you had tiny little hands, right? But now look at your hands. Your hands are pretty big. How did that become? Because the same cells that were in your body as you were a baby multiplied themselves and, you know, gave a structure to your body. Second thing that cells do is that the food that you eat, you know, maybe a potato chip or it can be a chicken fry, anything. So the food that you ate, the cells absorb or suck in or take in the nutrients from those foods that you eat and they basically convert those nutrients into energy. We need energy to move, right? So that's what cells do and that's a very, very important work. Now, another thing that cells do is that depending on the, you know, army squad, different cells have different important special tasks to do. For example, James Bond had a very different or special operation to carry out, right? Same way, cells, some cells can have very important special missions to carry out. So these are basically the three main things that cells do. Now, cells also contain the body's hereditary material and can make copies of themselves. So that means hereditary material, you can just remember the word chromosome right now, chromosome and DNA. So cells also contain chromosomes and DNAs and those things basically just help make multiple, multiple thousands and millions and trillions of copies of themselves. If cells did not make copies of themselves, then we wouldn't be this big right now. We'd all still be babies. Mm. So, did we all understand what is a cell now and what cells do? If you understand, then I would request you to give me a thumbs up emoji. You can find thumbs up emojis in the reaction button. Yes, I can see Nevan give me a thumbs up. I can see Ragit give me a thumbs up. I can see Dimet give me a thumbs up, thumbs up too. Um, I see Orudit also give me a thumbs up. Great. Tisen, did you give me a thumbs up? Um, I don't think Tisen has. Yes, Tisen has. If you don't understand, just give me a thumbs down emoji and I would help you understand again. Okay. So let's move on to the next thing. Now, there are basically two different important types of cells. You just need to remember the two important names, prokaryotic and eukaryotic. Can everyone repeat with me by unmuting yourselves? Let's say it after me, okay? Prokaryotic. Prokaryotic. Very good. And second one is eukaryotic. 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 Very good. So let's repeat again. Prokaryotic. Prokaryotic. And and eukaryotic. 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 Yes. Kind of cute, right? These names. I think they're really cute. So. The animals or the living things that have prokaryotic cells are called prokaryotes. 
Can you repeat again with me, everyone? Prokaryotes. Prokaryotes. Yes. So prokaryotes are basically the tiny, 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 small things that we can't even see. Okay, we need a microscope to see them. Like bacteria or viruses or very, very tiny plants or animals that are found in the sea. So those are prokaryotic cells or uh, those are prokaryotes, you know, organisms or living things that just have one simple prokaryotic cell or just one simple cell. This cell doesn't have every other spices. It's very simple. So these are very simple things. So that's why they're prokaryotes. They can do a lot of stuff. They can do math, they can sing, they can dance. Yeah, they can cook either. <laughs> so, so those are prokaryotes, you know, the, all the little, little, little tiny things that, you know, that whose love, lives are basically kind of boring. So now, eukaryotic cells are on only found in plants. It can be very tiny moss plants or very giant bunion trees, any plants, animals. It can be very tiny ants or, you know, insects or, you know, very giant animals, fungi, and protists. So basically all the interesting living things have eukaryotic cells inside their bodies. So we are all basically eukaryotes. All of us who have, you know, fun lives. All of us who can dance, cook, or, you know, watch TV or play video games. So all of us are eukaryotes. Eukaryotes, you know, what's special about eukaryotes? Eukaryotes basically have very well-organized bodies and they have very complicated cells. We're going to learn about these complicated cells later. Yes, I can see two people raise hand. Um, yes, Orudit, can you share? What, any questions? No, teacher. Yes, yes, go on. Any question? No, teacher. Uh, I can't really hear you. Can you type in the chat box? Uh, can you write in the chat box dear i can't hear you properly i will move on to ragit yes any questions ragit what is you said about area of pictures are found in plants animals and fungi right yes what yes are fungi? what are fungi hmm. fungi or fungi Anyway, you can say them. So these are very fun things. I think I can just Google you and uh, Google and show you. That would be awesome. Let's just. I uh, have seen fungi. So in Bengali, you know, in my language, we call them bangachata. So that basically means tiny little umbrellas that frogs use. So I'm going to show you guys um, what actually that looks like. Mm, wait a minute. So fungi are, ah, here you go. Does that look familiar to you guys? Oh, the mushrooms like this. Yes. Uh, well, not all of them are called mushrooms, but yes, fungi basically uh, is a broad term that basically covers all of their names. But just look at these cute mushrooms, right? These are called fungi. So they basically grow in um, wet, dark places. It can be inside forests or you can also farm mushrooms. And some of them you can eat, some of them you will basically just die if you eat because they are very toxic. Um, so yeah, these are all fungi. Excuse me, teacher. I yes. had one mushroom growing in my garden. But wow. 
Because of the rain, it broke from the stem and it was separated so in the rain. So you ate that, ate that mushroom? No. It was like a plate knife that it didn't come to the top part. Oh, like awesome. I would love to see that mushroom. Can you send me a picture? But now it's broken and it's gone. It's the part. Oh, okay. No worries. Okay. So, very interesting questions. Panjais are interesting, interesting thing. Let's see if we have time to, you know, learn a little bit about them today. So, these are the basic two types of cells that all the living things on planet Earth have. Prokaryotic cells and eukaryotic cells. So I'm going to give you guys um, a second or two to just, you know, look at this slide before I change it. Yes. And see if, uh, yeah, and just look at these uh, definitions. Just remember that prokaryotic is the simple stuff, all the living things that, you know, don't have all the fun like we have. And eukaryotic uh, or eukaryotes are all the animals or all the organisms that have all the fun, okay? Now, I think we can take a five minutes brain break. Uh, yes, I think we can. Um, I'm going to let you guys go on a break. You can, you know, get up from the uh, table. You can stretch a little bit. You can have water. And we're going to come back in five minutes. Okay? You can turn off your cameras and just relax for a little. Then we are going to continue our lessons. Bye. I just saw atoms.
Okay, everyone, we're gonna come back right now. And I'm gonna request you guys to turn on your cameras and we're gonna start our lesson. Okay, brain break time is up. Let's start. Okay, I can see um, Aurodit come back. I can see Dimit. Um, I can't see Ragit and Thyssen yet. But let's start anyway. I hope you guys are gonna come back soon. Okay. So. Let me share my screen first. Mm. Okay, guys, I can see um, all of it. I can see. I use I was seeing Thyssen and Ragit, um, but okay. So if you guys don't mind, we can all turn on our cameras so I can see your beautiful smiles and start our lesson. All right. Did you guys have a good break? Yes, teacher. Yes. What did you do? Did you drink water? Did you do a little bit of dancing? What did you do? You stretched. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, what about everyone else? Okay, so now, now we're going to actually learn about one thing. What is that one thing? Well, we are going to learn what is outside a cell so we learned that a cell is basically like a building block of a living thing okay but now what is outside a cell every little cell has some important things outside the cell some important things inside the cell so first we are going to start with the outside right so basically every cell has a cell membrane. A membrane or membrane is 
basically like um uh maybe you can think about the uh gate main gate that you have outside your house you know if you uh if you have a house um you might have also a walled gate right and that gate basically surrounds your entire house or your building or your apartment complex and you have a tiny gate in that wall and basically that uh, allows you to enter or exit your building right and that wall just uh, you know cordons of your entire building or your apartment complex from all the other things outside right now um i can give another example um think about a plastic uh, bag right think about and actually think about a plastic balloon a big giant plastic balloon now you fill the balloon with water and now you tie off the balloon now if you put a cardboard box outside the balloon right and you basically just make a tiny little gate outside the balloon that gate is going to be a hard thing right the balloon is soft it has water in it it's a water balloon water balloons are pretty fun so water balloons move around a lot and water balloons are not solid but the basically the cardboard box or the hard wall that you now have put up around your balloon is hard and it's solid right it doesn't move around a lot it's structured and it's rigid it's tough now if you um for example um you guys have sponges right so if you um took a, took a few sponges and you made you know basically another tiny gate that surrounded your water balloon now you will have another gate like structure but that gate like structure is a little bit flexible than the cardboard wall and it can move around a little bit and it can absorb water or any other things liquid things so that's the example that i want to use to help you guys understand what cell membrane and cell walls are okay so cell wall is the hard cardboard paper box uh, paper gate that you made around your water balloon and the sponge gate that you made around your water balloon you know the gate that moves is the cell membrane so the membrane is flexible but the cell wall is solid it doesn't move it's quite tough and rigid now let me explain it a little bit more so if you look at the slide i have written out the definitions let's try to understand okay so the exterior of the cell it means that basically whatever is outside the cell the plasma membrane the cell membrane is also known as the plasma membrane okay so the cell membrane is a flexible wall that keeps moving that that, that keeps the content of the cell inside everything that you have inside a little cell and we have a lot of things inside the cell a cell membrane basically keeps all those little things inside the cell tight but the cell membrane also has tiny little pores in all around it so that pore allows some of the waste products from the cell to go out of those little pores and just move outside right so think about let's go back to our water balloon right so if you made tiny little holes around or you know on the on the body of the sponge uh, membrane that you made around your uh, around your water around your water balloon 
those sponge sponges or that sponge gate can you know have some things enter but also can have some things leave so cell membranes are basically flexible that allows some materials not all just very few some materials to move through so cell membrane is porous porous let me write down the word porous in the chat box this is very important to remember okay you can look at the chat box and see that i've written down cell membrane porous cell walls on the other hand are not porous at all do you see the difference Do you guys understand the difference between the membrane and the wall? Walls are hard, right? Walls don't move at all. If you kick a wall in your house, you're going to hurt yourself, right? Because walls are really hard and solid and rigid. They usually don't move. But membranes, membranes move. Membranes are very flexible and they can allow some materials to go out through the membranes or come inside through the membranes inside the cells okay now one important fact that i would love you guys to remember is and i'm gonna write it down in the chat box too so you can you know take notes cell membranes are found in all animals and plants but cell walls are only found in plants so what does that mean ragit can you share what you understand by what coach just shared ragit yes can you unmute and just share with us um mm -hmm. i think it's only a part of cells uh, that mm -hmm. are in a plant or mm -hmm. any and it's like an animalizing plant life um um well, it's like an animal plant life cell i think okay well kind of close but not quite there yet let me correct you so cell walls are only around around not inside around or outside plant cells okay so cell walls are like walls that you know protect your houses walls protect your rooms or houses right or gates same thing is cell walls cell walls excuse me cell walls are basically just found around plant cells they are around not inside around or outside cell. so you can see that you can look at the example that i've written down if a plant cell think of a plant cell like a water balloon right and the cell wall is like a cardboard box that protects the balloon. Now, cardboard boxes are like, yeah, you know, pretty hard and solid. They are very solid. So think of a tree, right? Think of a, um, I don't know, um, a mango tree. Think of a mango tree. The mango tree, you can uh, look at the, you know, bark of that tree. It's very hard, right? We can basically knock on that. It's very hard. It keeps the tree straight and stand tall. That thing is made out of cell walls. Cell walls are very hard and they basically protect the plant cells. They are not present in animal cells. Animal cells only have cell membranes to protect them. 
Yes, Rajit is Rajit is very right. I can see Rajit writing in the chat box that cell walls are not porous. Yes, cell walls are very difficult people. Okay, they don't let anyone in. They are very serious, very very serious. So they don't so they don't play with anyone. They don't cook for anyone. Whatever. So you know, so cell walls are difficult. They don't allow any materials to come inside a plant cell. But cell membranes are much more porous and flexible. They basically allow some materials, not every materials, but very few to move through and come inside a plant cell. So now, now that we understood what is a cell wall and a cell membrane. Let me just mention one important thing. I'm gonna stop sharing the slide and just let you guys look at me and understand this. So, cell membranes. Plants have cell membranes too, right? Animals don't have cell walls. Now, what are these, uh, you know, um, cell walls or cell membranes made out of. So for now, you guys only need to understand one basic thing and that is that cell membranes are made out of two things. How many things? Two things, proteins and something very important called lipids. Proteins and lipids. Can you guys repeat after me? Proteins and lipids. Proteins and lipids. Yes. Very, very good. Proteins and lipids. Yes. Proteins and lipids. Yes. Thank you, Thyssen. Okay. So, proteins and lipids. These are the two important things that basically made out of that basically make the cell membranes that are outside a cell now there are lots of details to this thing and how these are uh, you know protein and lipid layers that are outside the cells and what they do and i think you guys can just you know do a little bit of research and understand you don't have to go in very deep. It's just something that you guys need to uh, keep in mind. I think there's a lot of, you know, complicated details to it. You don't have to learn all of that right now. Um, but a little bit of research would tell you that it's just a very simple structure. Okay. So I'm going to move on from that now. Let me share my screen again. Uh, okay. Yes, so. Okay, now, so now, from outside the cell, we are actually now inside the cell, okay? We learned what is outside a cell, cell wall and cell membrane, these two things. Now we are gonna move on to what things are inside a cell. So inside every cells, there are some important things, especially if you are, you know, an eukaryote or a fun, complicated living thing, you have lots of lots of tiny organelles inside the cell. So now we are going to learn about the organelles that are inside the cell. First organelle is cytoplasm. Now, what are cytoplasm? Cytoplasm. Cyto means cell. Plasm means jelly something jellyish we all love jellies right jellies and jams or you know all these things that are like floating yeah so cytoplasm means 
something that is like jellyish, something that looks a little transparent, you know, it doesn't really have any color. So it's just a jellyish thing that has all the important organelles of a cell dotted inside it. So you can see in the slide that I've written down, all our organelles inside the cell float in the cytoplasm. So you can think of cytoplasm like a jelly that holds all the important organelles like nucleus, chloroplast, mitochondria, all that fun stuff. Yes. Now, let's move on to the next organelle. This is a very important organelle. It's called the nucleus. Now, a lot of us know what nucleuses are, right? We have learned about them in chemistry. It's inside an atom. It's the center of an atom. It's very powerful. But now we can learn that inside all of our cells, we also have nucleuses. So what does a nucleus do? A nucleus is like the brain of a cell, okay? So it's the brain. It does all the important thinking stuff, all the stuff. And it basically controls all the stuff that a cell does. So for example, I've written down cell operations. So all the duties, functions that cells have, to carry out it can be to you know transplant um it can be to you know carry all the nutrients from our body you know the chicken burger that you probably ate today you know the cells in your body is trying to break down that chicken burger and turn it into the important nutrients that your body needs and basically supply those nutrients through the cells all across your body. Now, nucleus, nucleus is inside all the cells and nucleus controls all these activities, okay? So nucleus is a very busy person, very busy. Now, nucleus looks like a circular little thing and I can actually share you with you guys what it looks like. Let's see. Uh, nucleus in cell. You can also Google and look at the pictures. Here you go. So um, let's look at this one. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Nucleus is like a tiny red, uh, tiny circular thing, okay? And inside the nucleus is another tiny little circular thing. And that circular tiny thing inside the nucleus is called nucleolus. I'm gonna write it in the chat box, nucleolus. Nucleolus. Can you guys um, uh, repeat after me a little bit? Nucleolus. Nucleolus. Very good. Nucleolus. I'm, yes, nucleolus. So inside nucleus, we have nucleolus. Inside nucleus, we have nucleolus. Um, if we take a look at this picture, for example, Mm. Okay, the picture is too tiny for you guys to see, but um, yeah, okay. So you can see that this is actually a microscopic image of a cell, of actually multiple cells. Yeah, these are the liver cells. So these cells are inside our livers, okay? Look at them. So the tiny red uh, purplish thing that you see, yeah, circular. Those are the nucleus. Now, inside the nucleus, you can see another tiny little circular thing. 
And that, as the arrow shows, is the nucleolus. Pretty interesting, right? Yes, nucleolus. Now, let's move on um, to a little bit about the nucleus. Okay, so if I'm just going to uh, explain very quickly, again, nucleolus is the brain of the cell and it controls all the cell operations, okay? So it's like the general of an army, okay? Or it can be the president of a country, right? So it's a very important thing. It does all the main activities. And inside the nucleus, we have an, another tiny circular thing. And that tiny thing is called a nucleolus. Now, let's move on to the next organelle. Okay, next we have chromosomes and centrioles chromosomes and centrioles. Now, chromo chromosomes are basically the things or organelles that make life what they are. So, chromosomes carry all the important information about us. Okay, so they'll tell our stories. Chromosomes are storytellers. So if we didn't have chromosomes in our cells, imagine what would happen. You wouldn't be you today, okay? You'd be a completely different thing. So chromosomes carry all the important information used to help a cell grow, thrive, and multiply themselves by reproducing. And Chromosomes are made up of DNA. And segments of DNA or bits of DNA in specific patterns are called genes. So these are, actually, these are a bit of, uh, you know, complicated things, but just remember the terms and how they're related. You know, your genes make who you are. So DNA and chromosomes carry the important information about you. They tell your story, okay? And in prokaryotes, the chromosomes and centrioles are incomplete. You know, they are, you know, prokaryotes, they're very simple. They are like bacteria and viruses. So they are not, they don't have that much information. They don't have that much, you know, that many stories to tell. But in eukaryotes, we have a lot of story to tell. And that's why we have all these chromosomes, DNA, and all that stuff. Now, I think it would be awesome if we um, looked at a video uh, because that would make a lesson more interesting, I think. And that video would... Uh, you know, talk about all the cell organelles, and you guys can take a look and you know, maybe. And so, I'm gonna play a video. Yes, Ragi, thank you so much for engaging in the chat box. You guys can also use the chat box to ask questions. I will take the questions later, but you can just keep the questions there and we can move on now. We're gonna watch a video about the cell structure and all the parts of the cell. I want you to pay close attention, okay? And write down any questions you might have. All living things on earth, from the tiniest creatures to the tallest of trees, are made of microscopic parts called cells. Living things can be made of just one cell or have many. Whether it's a plant or an animal, cells are the basic structures they are composed of. That's why cells are sometimes called the building blocks of life. Although there are many, many different types of cells that all have different jobs to do, most cells have some things in common. For now, we will be dealing with two types of cells, plant cells and animal cells. 
both plant cells and animal cells are surrounded by a cell membrane. The cell membrane is a thin, flexible layer that separates the inside of the cell from the outside of the cell. Remember that I've told you guys about the cell membrane or plasma membrane? So that's what's being explained here. It protects the cell and controls what is allowed to go in, food, and come out, waste. Plant cells have an extra layer called a cell wall that surrounds the membrane. The cell wall is tough and stronger than a membrane. Remember how I uh, told you guys that cell walls are like cardboard boxes? You know, they're very hard. So just look at a tree and just look at their bark and you will understand just how hard cell walls are, right? And they are only present in plant cells. Animals don't have cell walls. Cell walls provide support for plants to grow and keep their shape. So this is very important. Cell walls work basically to give shape and to keep the plants or trees rigid, okay? An elephant has a skeleton to support it as it grows. A redwood tree doesn't. Cell walls are what allows them to stand so tall. Inside the cell membrane, cells have smaller parts called organelles. Organelles are like tiny organs, and they each do specific jobs inside the cell. Remember guys how I've um, given you guys an analogy about soldiers in an army? Remember? Like I told you guys that um, every soldier in a particular squad or a team has a very specific job to do. Organelles inside a cell are the same. They have very specific jobs to do. So, for example, the work that nucleus does won't be done by another organelle called mitochondria. Okay, mitochondria has its own duty, nucleus has its own duty to do, and stuff like that. Some organelles bring in food, get rid of waste, repair the cell, and help it grow and reproduce. All of the organelles are held in a special gel called cytoplasm. So, I told you guys that plasm means jelly, right? Yes, jelly or gel. So, it's a very, you know, transparent, thick, flexible type of thingy that holds all the organelles together. Cytoplasm is usually colorless and about 80% water. Major organelles of a cell include the nucleus, vacuole, mitochondria, ribosomes, endoplasmic reticulum, Golgi apparatus, and only in plant cells, chloroplast. So let's take a moment, uh, let's take a few seconds to look at this picture in the video. You can see all the important um, organelles labeled in this um, picture you can find uh, labeled uh, cells uh, labeled cell pictures um, in google very easily i would suggest take a look at them and uh, they're very fun and colorful to look at um, and so yeah they give you an idea about what um, each of these um, organelles look like Let's talk about the nucleus first. The nucleus is the control center of the cell and acts kind of like the brain. So the nucleus is the brain of the cell, okay? So that's the, uh, this is a very important um, uh, example that I would love you guys to remember. The nucleus contains the DNA or genetic material that determines everything about the cell, like what kind of cell it will be and when it will divide. Next, let's talk about the vacuole. Vacuoles are basically storage tanks that the cell uses to hold water or other materials. A plant cell usually has one large vacuole, whereas an animal cell may have several smaller ones, called vesicles. Vacu
Molecules are often the largest organelle in a plant cell, and when plants do not get enough water, their vacuoles shrink and the plant begins to wilt. Mitochondria are famously the powerhouse of the cell. So mitochondria is like the, you know, battery of the cell or, for example, the generator of the cell. It, it creates and makes all the power or energy that is needed to keep a cell going. Okay? But they are important because they take food and turn it into energy that the rest of the cell can use. This process of using oxygen to break down sugars into chemical energy is called cellular respiration. Ribosomes are shaped like tiny balls but work like tiny factories. They make things that the cell needs, like proteins. The cell can use proteins made by the ribosomes to build new structures, repair damage, and direct chemical reactions. Some ribosomes float free in the cytoplasm, while others are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum. Endoplasmic reticulum, sometimes called ER, is a cellular highway. So, think of the endoplasmic reticulum. Wow, a tough word, right? No worries, they are also shortened and known as ER. So, if you just write ER, everyone will understand what you're talking about. Endoplasmic reticulum, think of them like um, roads or highways. Look at how they look. They kind of look like squiggly, uh, you know, mountain roads, right? So yeah. It's a transportation network that takes molecules where they need to go. The endoplasmic reticulum helps transport proteins made by the ribosomes to the Golgi apparatus. The Golgi apparatus looks a little bit like a stack of pancakes, and it can be thought of as the post office of the cell. So, the nucleus is the brain of the cell, right? Mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. And what are Golgi apparatus or Golgi bodies? Golgi bodies are the... Can anyone tell me what the video just told? The post office? Yes, thank you so much. Yes, Golgi bodies are the post office of the cell. What it does is take things like proteins or other molecules that need to be transported around or out of the cell and inspects them for flaws, packages them up, and sends them where they need to go. Finally, let's look at the chloroplast. Chloroplasts are found only in plant cells and contain chlorophyll, the substance that allows photosynthesis to take place. So, chloroplast is a very, very interesting organelle. So, it basically helps plants to make food. And the way or the process that plants use to make their food is called photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, okay? So chloroplasts are only available in plant cells. Animals don't have chloroplasts because we can't, you know, we can't, we, are that, we aren't that cool yet, okay? Plants are very cool. They can make their own food. But we animals, we just have to rely on plants to make our food, you know? So that's why we don't have chloroplasts, but plants do. In photosynthesis, chlorophyll absorbs energy from sunlight and creates sugar to feed the plant. Simple plant cells may have only one or two chloroplasts in them, but more complex ones may have hundreds. So for example, um, maybe a very tiny moss or a very, you know, all of those very tiny plants, they have very few chloroplast organelles inside them. But if you look at a big tree or if you look at a big plant, any house plant you have, they have the more number of chloroplasts because they have bigger bodies. They need like to be yes, like hundreds or maybe thousands, or it can even be millions if the tree is very huge. So it just it's just yeah. all about yeah, it's just all about how much food you need to make, right? If you are big, then you need lots of food 
And if you're small, then you need a tiny quantity of food. So chloroplasts just help plants to make food. That's it. Yes, 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 yes. Yes, go on. Babies need a bit of food because they are small and like we just need big food because they are big. Yes, exactly. Babies, you know, when you were really tiny, you could only drink milk. But now you can uh, eat and drink lots of fun stuff, right? So, yeah. Um, if you have any other questions, um, can you please write them down in the chat box? I will take them later, okay? Let's finish the video. Cells and the tiny organelles inside them do the work that allows living things to live and function. Without cells, there would be no life on Earth. I hope you enjoyed learning about cells today. Yes, I hope you enjoyed the video and it was quite um, uh, illuminating, I would say. Okay, so now um, I'm going to go through all the cell organelles that we learned about in our, you know, in the video. And if you guys want, I can also uh, copy the link of that video so you can, you know, take a look at them um, when you're doing your homework. Um, would that be okay? Yes. Um, I think someone raised their hand. I'm going to take the question later. Uh, no, not teacher. That was a mistake. Oh, okay. Okay. No worries at all. So I have pasted the link of the video in the chat box. You can um, uh, bookmark that link and uh, look at that later. So let's move on. Mm -hmm. Okay. So now there is another cell organelle that lives inside a cell and that cute organelle is named ribosome. So what do ribosomes do? Okay, so they have actually a very important job. And if you look at the slide, I've written down what they do. And I'm going to just um, explain it to you guys as easily as I can. Okay, so cells, they need to make protein. We all need protein, okay? Our bodies are made out of protein. Now, cells need to make proteins to keep us alive, okay? Simple. Now, enzymes. What are enzymes? Enzymes made of proteins. So enzymes, just think of them as like a chemical that our bodies need. And these are made of proteins. And enzymes use our enzymes just help us speed up all the work that our cells do. Now, other proteins, there are various kinds of proteins. Enzymes are just one type. Other proteins support cell functions. There are other proteins that help cells do other work. Enzymes help do some very specific work. And all of these proteins, you know, they're very important. And when a cell needs to make proteins, it wants ribosome. So for example, when you are um, when you are making, I don't know, anything, when you're making, uh, for example, when you're cooking uh, pizza or when you are cooking uh, pasta or anything, you need salt, right? Salt is very important. You need salt. So cells, when they're making proteins, they also need ribosomes. Ribosomes are very important. Without ribosomes, you cannot make protein at all. So it's kind of like salt because without salt, our food would be very boring. So that's the same thing um, uh, for cells. They need ribosomes. Now, the so ribosomes, they are the protein builders, okay? They build the protein. Yes, I can see a few people raise hands. Um, if you have any questions, I would 
like you guys to write the questions in the chat box. Um, after I'm, I'm done with this slide, I will go through them, okay? No worries. Now, ribosomes are like the construction guys. You know the construction people that build your houses? They do a lot of hard work, right? They move around these things, they do this, they build that and that. So ribosomes are like construction guys. They connect one thing at a time and they build long protein chains. And these protein chains help us a lot. Now, let's look at another cell organelle. It is called the mitochondria. Now, mitochondria are actually pretty fun to look at. Um, if you Google them, you will see a lot of pictures of mitochondria and they kind of look like a, you know, a battery. Now, speaking of battery, mitochondria actually do make energy. They make all the energy that cells need to run themselves. So some people call mitochondria the powerhouses of the cell because mitochondria supply all the energy that our cells require to survive now if we move on a little quick we'll move on to the chloroplast chloroplast as i've mentioned before are only found in plant cells because Plants are the only cool people that make their own food, right? Animals, we cannot make our own food. So chloroplasts are only found in plant cells and sometimes algae too. Now, chloroplasts, what they do is they take the sunlight that, you know, falls on a plant and then they use that sunlight and carbon dioxide from air and they make this awesome carbohydrate called sugar. It's also called the glucose. And that glucose is basically the food for the plant. The same way that we have food like rice um, uh, or, you know, other things. Plants also need food and that food is called glucose. It's kind of a sugar. And that sugar is basically made by chloroplasts. Now, this entire food making process is called photosynthesis and we will learn more about photosynthesis later. But for now, you need to remember that chloroplast is the only cell organelle that helps plants make food. Okay. Next endoplasmic reticulum also known as the er now this is basically like you know from the video we saw that endoplasmic reticulum or er looks like squiggly roads right roads or highways or streets they basically help carry or transport important stuff so they're basically like the re roads or streets that we have now what do they carry they carry or they transport important materials, okay? So this can be fats, this can be lipids, this can be proteins. So they carry a lot of stuff. So for now, we, we only need to understand this basic thing. There are two types of ER, rough ER or rough endoplasmic reticulum. And they basically have tiny ribosomes all around their bodies that makes them look tough and hard. And then we have smooth ear that do not have ribosome. So that's the only thing that you need to remember for now. Let's move on. And we have Golgi bodies. We looked at the Golgi bodies in the video, right? Golgi bodies are the post office of the cell organelle. So they deliver all the important information that cells require and they deliver it to where? They deliver it to the cell membrane or the cell wall. Now, 
if I move on quickly, vacuoles. Remember vacuoles from the video? These are basically like, like bubbles or kind of like empty spaces. And sometimes they uh, storage, they work as a storage and they store Thank food. You. Yes, vacuoles, yeah. They, you know, yes, they met, yes. Uh, if they met, you have a question, can you please write down in the chat box? I will answer them later, okay? Okay, so vacuoles are basically storage bubbles. So they store stuff like food, they also can sometimes store water. And if they run out of water to store, we can see that plant look kind of like very yeah. tired. Yeah. yeah. They can kind of look like they're dying. So, you know, if you have a house plant, if you do not water that house plant for a few days, you are going to see that the plant is basically drooping and it looks sad. That's because the vacuoles inside those plant cells have run out of water to store and nutrients to store. Okay, so vacuoles have a very important job to do. The storage, they work as a storage unit. They store all the important stuff. And they supply those stuff when it's a tough or difficult time, right? They sometimes can even store waste products that cells do not need, you know? So they can sometimes also work as trash bin. That's all. Now, let's move on to something else called microfilaments. Um, you can just take a look at them. They are not that important a cell organelle, but you just look at the names. Microfilaments, they're basically like tiny, long, thin noodles, like proteins, and they are just all over the cells. And they basically hold together the structure of the cell. And they basically just contain the shape. And they can sometimes move like snakes and they can help move the organelles around. So these are filaments or, you know, stringy, thin, long proteins. That's all you need to remember about microfilaments. They're called micro because they're very tiny. That's all. Okay. And microtubules. Um, I don't think microtubules are that important, but um, you guys can take a look. Microtubules just basically look like small, tiny tubes, okay? But they are thick. They're kind of thick. And they're made out of proteins. That's all. Next, we have lysosomes. So lysosomes, I like to call them the mm, I like to call them the community cleaners of the cells. So like in our communities, we have cleaner people, awesome people that help keep our communities clean, right? They take out our trash, they help us keep our houses clean, our areas clean. Lysosomes are the cleaners of our cells. Yes, I think I see Dimit raising a hand. If you have a question, please write down in the chat box. We are going to address them soon. So lysosomes are one kind of cell organelles that live inside the cell that work as the cleaner guys. They help the cell get rid of the waste products, all the products that are harmful for the cells that the cells do not need. They help those waste products to get rid of and keep the cells clean. Now, I think we're done. We are almost done, yes. Maybe we can take a break or maybe we can move on to um, the final bits we have. What do you guys say? 
would you like to take a break or would you like to just uh, finish the um finish just finish. finish right okay okay so we don't have much left um i just wanted to um clarify the difference that we have between plant cells and animal cells let's look at the slide that um i put up um, I would love to see Rag Ragit. Can you read the first line? Can you I read the yeah yeah? Can the you read the the most significant difference? I can't see teacher. It's too. Uh, can you blurry. see the screen? Yeah, it's blurry. It's okay, now it's okay. The okay. most significant differences between plant and animal cells organisms are the cell walls. Vacuums and chloroplasts. Ah, do you understand what that means? It means that the only differences that plants and animal cells have are between the three cell organelles, cell walls, vacuoles, and chloroplasts. So these are the three spices that basically plant and animal cells argue about. Okay, They have a fight about these things. Now, I would request um, Arudit to read the next line, plant cells. Yeah, can you read this para? Can you read this bit? Yeah. Plant cells have within several in the plasma membrane. Yes. Use the cells. Their rectangular structure and helps plants stand upright without the need for an aquarium. Upright without structure. Mm -hmm. Without the need for an internal reinforcing structure, then Continue. As bones for an exoskeleton. Yeah. Exoskeleton. Yeah. So, what does that mean, Audit? That means plant cells, you know, the cell wall that I talked about, the hard cardboard box thing. That's something that only plant cells have and it gives them a solid structure and helps plants or trees stand tall and strong okay basically if you look at a plant or you look at a tree they don't have any bones right they only have plant cells to keep them rigid and strong now i would request um, i would request Dimit to read the next few lines from here to here. Yeah, Dimit, can you go on read the next line? Chloroplus. Yeah. Chloroplus in plant cells generate energy to get fruit. Photosynthesis. Photosynthesis, the process takes sunlight and water and converts them into energy for the cell and plant. Animal cells do not have triple Chloroplast. Chloroplast. Yeah, it's pronounced as chloroplast. So, thank you. So animal cells do not have chloroplasts, plant cells have, and chloroplasts help plants make food or generate energy through a fun process called photosynthesis. We are going to learn more about that. Don't worry. Now, I think I would request um, Thyssen. Can you read the next? Um, let me highlight. Can you read the next few lines? Uh, from where the plant cells also have a single until 
different function. Hmm. Yes. Yes. From here. Yeah. Can you read the whole uh, paragraph? Okay. Uh, but I can't see some. You can't see. Um. Well, can I you can see, see now? Can you see now? Yeah. Is it? Yeah. Is it blurry? Uh, no. Okay. Go on. Lancers also have a single large vacuole. Vacuole. Yeah. Function of this function of this organelle is mm -hmm. to store water and sap. Mm. The vacuole increases and decreases in size depending on the amount stored in them. When plants lack water, the vacuole shrinks, making the cell cave in on itself and causing the plant to droop. Animal cells have vacuoles, but they are smaller, more numerous, and have a different function. Wow, thank you so much. That was awesome. Thank you, guys. Um, that was yeah, a good continue. study. Um, and so this is kind of an important um, differentiation that we can learn. So basically, uh, plant cells, um, plant cells and animal cells have just these three key differences. And these differences are based on the cell walls, vacuoles, and chloroplasts only in these three organelles. All the rest of the stuff are same and same in both plant cells and animal cells. Just these three are where all the trouble begins. Now, let's see if we can move on to the next stuff. Now, um, I don't think we have time for group work. But um, I will make sure to um, create a fun group work for you guys um, in our next class. Um, and speaking of homework, uh, your homework will be assigned pretty soon. And you will get to know what the homework is. But for now, I'm going to take five minutes and make you guys do an exit ticket before you leave our class. And so an exit ticket is something that you're just going to do. So I understand what you took away from our today's class. And if you learn something, if I can help you better. And so I'm going to copy and paste a link in the chat box. And you are going to click on the link and you are going to fill out the exit ticket. And don't forget to click on submit after you are done filling the exit ticket. Then you are going to write done in the chat box here so i know that you are done okay so oh yeah speaking of homework um i gave you guys a um, i gave you guys a video link right so that can be the you know excuse me teacher i don't have the link in the chat mm. box teacher yeah in the chat box in the zoom chat box i'm gonna copy that again yeah so that can be a good homework and if i think of anything more i will tell you guys later okay so this is the homework for now and i'm gonna copy paste the exit ticket link just a second Okay, so now you can go click on the link that I've just posted in the chat box and start doing the exit ticket. You have, I think I can give you five minutes for the exit ticket. Hopefully that's enough. And before you go, excuse me, before you go to the exit ticket, um, I would love to mention that 
the homework you can do a video of yourself right a small one minute or maximum two minutes video clip you can make a video clip and record that and send it to us and you can talk about what you learned from today's class and all about sales structure and that thing okay yes Dimit, tell me i've been doing the exit ticket now for homework yes you can also do the exit ticket now you can start now and you know you guys also uh, send video homeworks in your astronomy class right so that's the same thing that we're going to do in our biology class we're going to make a video what you learned and you are going to share the link, uh, share the video with us so we can look through them. OK, so I'm going to copy the exit ticket link again. Please click on the link and tell me if uh, everything is working. It's a Google form. And your time starts now. Can all of you guys um, uh, access the exit ticket? Yeah, everyone's doing the exit ticket. Give me a thumbs up if you do, if you're doing the exit ticket, give me a thumbs up so I can see. Yeah, I can see Dimet, give me a thumbs up. I don't know if Arud, if you are doing the exit ticket. Can you give me a thumbs up? Mm. Okay. We have four more minutes left for the exit ticket. Excuse me, teacher. How do we do it? Yes, yes. How do we do it? Well, um, uh, can you click the link and open a form? You can see that a little form is showing up. So you can, uh, you know, you can just um, write your name down. You can answer the questions and there are some multiple choice questions. And you just choose the answer that you think is correct. Don't worry at all if you're making a mistake. Just choose the answer that you think is correct and then click submit when you're done. Understood? Okay, I will be here if you don't understand anything or need help. So this is basically uh, a Google form similar to what you guys um, uh, receive at the end of the um, astronomy classes every month. Okay, remember that? So that's the same thing. I, so we are gonna do the same thing after every biology class. Excuse me, teacher. Yes, go on. Uh, in the fourth question, the mm. membrane that is still uh, after that, how do we pronounce it? The membrane that a cell organelle has, organelle. Is that the one you are trying to say? 
yeah, yeah, yeah. Organelle, yeah. The membrane that a cell organelle has is different than the cell membrane. Uh, okay, teacher. Okay. So we have three more minutes left. Teacher, I am finished. Oh, wow. Thank you so much, Ragi. That's awesome. If you have finished, give me a thumbs up. Yes. Uh, Thank did you. you. Did you show my submit? Okay, let me check. Yes, I have received your answers. Okay. Thank you so much. If you have any questions, you can ask that now in the chat box. Teacher? Yes, Dimit? I, I finished my exit ticket too. Okay, did you click submit? Yes, I clicked. Okay, let me check if I have received. Mm. Yes, I have received Dimit's work, yeah. And Thyssen's too, and Aurudit's too now. Yes. Thank you, guys. I think I have uh, basically all the answers now. Yeah, um, all the responses now. Okay. okay. Thank you so much. If you have any questions now, you can ask right now. And then we can all um, wrap up. Any questions from today's class? No teacher. No, nothing, no questions. Already, Dimit, Tisen, any questions? Okay, we learned a lot of stuff and I understand if you guys are feeling a little overwhelmed, that's absolutely okay. Just don't be stressed. These are very easy stuff and just take a little bit of time. Um, okay, Ragi, I think, wait, let me see if I received your responses. Um, no, I don't see Ragi, it's a Google form, exit ticket. Ragi, did you uh, submit? Uh, I pressed the green color button called the submit. Uh, uh, yes, I did actually. You did, right? But I don't see it. Okay, let me refresh. Mm. No, I don't see Ragit's exit ticket. Ragit, I don't see your exit ticket, Baba. Um, can you um submit can, again? Can, sir, my next yes, my teacher, can you tell about the homework again? Okay, yeah, the homework, right? Okay. First, Ragit, can you do the exit ticket again, Baba? Sorry, I didn't receive it. I don't see your exit ticket here. Mm. Can you kindly do it again? Um, and yes, I'm gonna go back to your questions. Um, you asked about the homework, right? So basically you can make a video 
the same way that you make the video for your astronomy class and you talk about what you learned from today's class about cell structure and you make it basically one minute or two minutes long and so yeah that's it and you know the video that i uh, shared the link uh, in the chat box i'm gonna copy the link again and that's the video that you are gonna watch for homework so basically that's the thing that's it okay so watch the video and make a video yourself after doing a little bit of research and understanding what cell structures and what all the things that we learned today that's all okay so um anyone else has any questions okay if anyone else does not have any questions then i'm gonna close down for now thank you guys so much i very much enjoy taking your class okay and gonna see you next week and take care of yourself till then bye orudit bye ragit bye dimit bye dj take care bye teacher Good night, teacher. Bye and good night. Bye.